this is a just a gorgeous room. Absolutely, I like and a gorgeous. You like this piano? You know, what's the story of this piano? Well, I can play some a hint, a musical hint for you. Are you kidding? Yeah. This is Liszt's piano. It's Liszt's piano. Holy. <laughs> Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. All right. Um, Antonio, you, you took us all the way to 20th century jazz, which just blows my mind. But how do we get from Renaissance music to the Baroque? Was it the improvement in technology of instruments that led composers to write more instrumental music? Or did the interest in instrumental music force makers like Stradivari and Guarneri del Gesù to make better instruments. What, yeah. what came first? Well, it happened that, you know, first of all, I mean, the instruments were a little more, and the technology came, you know, and helped us, mm -hmm. you know. So I think that the technology evolved, the instruments evolved, and the capacity and the, the invention and the visions of the composers merge into that kind of, you know, ability that the instruments have. What you're saying is that, I mean, guys like, the Amati family, Stradivari, they're making these great instruments and they're inspiring in some ways people like Vivaldi and other Baroque composers to write instrumental music. Absolutely. Because the technology is there. Because they sound good. And the because technology they sound was, good. Yeah. And then they were able to envision the sound. They were able to envision, you know, the, the Vivaldi is so visual. It's like a, you know, constant soundtrack. Right. We look at it, you know. He, Looks, I mean, he was in this in this world, and everything was so natural to him. We, we don't have, you know, the mental uh, depth of uh, of the counterpoint that Bach elaborated. And Bach was very fond of Vivaldi, obviously. I think the genius of Vivaldi is in taking a melody and very fresh, very inventive, with the, an incredible amount of uh, of variations and, uh, and giving us the freshness, and the, the, the kind of approach that. In, in, uh, allows us to enjoy the music. Okay, so here is the Vivaldi melody, La Follia, the sonata number one, and opus one, number 12. But what, what, if, what if Bach wrote that? What would that sound like? I would sound like this. <laughs> Good for you. I wish I had that kind of a mind. Thank so, you. so obviously Bach had a huge influence on on, on, on anyone. Mozart, <laughs> yeah. he had an influence on Beethoven, on Brahms, Mendelssohn, Schumann. So there, there kind of is a, a link from Vivaldi to all yeah. of those composers. Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously, uh, I compare this to the DNA. You know, you have a cell of DNA you bring always with you. If you change, I mean, obviously, I mean, you morph into something else but you still keep the kind of original freshness and and pattern mm -hmm. that characterize your inner thing so for instance this theme can be interpreted in a, in a different way so let's see that uh, uh mozart was writing you know was maybe a, a variation on, on the <laughs> That's a difficult one. <laughs> Just do you have in you? Oh, I don't know. But we can try some romantic stuff.
Okay, let, if we skip over the 12 tone in the, the second Viennese school, uh, <laughs> uh, what about like something like Bill Evans? <laughs> So Vivaldi inspired Bach, who inspired everyone after that.